It's been a long few months. Believe me, I know. I've been to the Gulf Coast four times already this season. The U.S. has sustained five hurricane landfalls. Beryl, Debbie, Francine, Helene, and Milton. Each of the five have caused damage and destruction. Many communities are just beginning to pick up the pieces. Now, usually by mid to late October, the tropics begin to simmer down, and that does look to be happening right now. But we do have two areas to watch, this one near the Lesser Antilles, and this one in the Western Caribbean. But frankly, neither look to really do anything, and the Atlantic will flatline again after this weekend. So the million dollar question, what happens from here? And are we pretty much done? Statistically speaking, we are almost done. Only about 12% of a season's activity comes after mid-October. The month of November has featured only a quarter of the number of hurricanes as October historically has, meaning there's even less that should be coming next month. And the U.S. has never been hit by a major hurricane during the month of November. So some good news right off the bat, we're basically guaranteed to not see any more major hurricane strikes this season. Now there have been a few decent late season hurricanes. Kate came ashore east of Panama City just before Thanksgiving in 1985. It was a Category 2 hurricane. We also had a Category 2 that struck Miami on November 4th, 1935. That one earned the nickname the Yankee Hurricane, but a lot of folks forgot about that one thanks to the Labor Day Category 5 hurricane of that year. Holistically though, the ocean waters are cooling right now. The jet stream is shifting south, bringing harsh upper level winds, and those hostile upper level winds will begin tearing disturbances apart across the Atlantic once again. In August, we generally see storms form over the central Atlantic in the so-called main development region. But not this time of year. The secret hotspot in November is actually the Western Caribbean. Even in November, the Caribbean is still red hot with ample oceanic heat content, plentiful fuel to support hurricanes. And sometimes in the Caribbean, you get broad, diffuse eddies of spin that can tighten up and sort of consolidate into named storms. We call these Central American gyre systems. So basically, that's the only thing we'd really have to watch for in these next couple of weeks and ultimately through the rest of the season. Now, frankly, I don't think anything happens for at least the next 10 days. I think we stay silent. But by late October into early November, a broad batch of rising air is going to slip over the Atlantic. That's what all that green is. Green is upward motion. That's with something called a convectively coupled Kelvin wave. Sounds like a mouthful, but it's basically a big overturning circulation that meanders across the global tropics. You see the green that treks from the Pacific all the way east into the Atlantic. When the enhanced or the rising branch passes overhead, that upward moving air makes it easier for storms to form. So that's why I think we might have a very subtle window of opportunity sometime between, say, October 26th and November 10th. Again, the risk is low, but if something were to form, it would likely be in that window. Otherwise, not really anything. After, I'd say, the second week of November, we'll pretty much run out the clock. Until next season, of course. Follow My Radar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, and Windows.